internet and welcome back to our general math class. In this lesson, we will focus our attention on some selected properties of logarithmic functions. Those are the x-intercepts, zeros, and asymptotes. Recall that an intercept is the value where the graph crosses an x-axis. That is, if it is an x-intercept, then it is the x-value or abscissa of the point which touches the x-axis and since the y-coordinate of the point which contains the x-intercept is 0, then given an equation, the x-intercept is known by substituting 0 to y and solving for the corresponding x. And this x-intercept is, is also called 0 of the function. On the other hand, if it is a y-intercept, then it is the y-value or ordinate of the point which touches the y-axis and since the x-coordinate of the point which contains the y-intercept is 0, then given an equation, the y-intercept is known by substituting 0 to x and solving for corresponding y or f of x. Moreover, we have learned from the discussion of the domain and range of a logarithmic function that while the range is always the set of real numbers, the domain is dependent on the value of c in f of x equals logarithm of x minus c or in f of x equals a times logarithm of x minus c to the base b plus d. That is, the domain is x is greater than c. This denotes that while there is no horizontal asymptote, the vertical asymptote is x equals c. Example 1. Determine the intercept or intersects 0 and asymptote of f of x equals negative 4 times logarithm of x to the base 2. Let us first determine the x-intercept or the zero of the given function. Again, this is the given function in example 1. To know the x-intercept or its zero, we have to substitute zero to y. Recall that f of x is y also. So let us substitute zero to that y. Next, look at the right-hand side of the equation. It is composed of two factors. One is negative 4 and then the other is the logarithm. To simplify this, we have to use multiplication property of equality where we will divide both sides by this factor negative 4 or multiply both sides by negative 1 fourth. 0 divided by negative 4 is still 0 and negative 4 times this logarithm of x to the base 2 is logarithm of x to the base 2 because negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1 times the logarithm is still itself. Next, since it is written already in the form f of x or 0 equals logarithm of x to the base b, then we may now translate it or rewrite it in the exponential form. In the exponential form, it is 2 to the 0 equals x. And we know that any number raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. So 1 equals x. Or by reflexive property, that is x equals 1. That value of x, when y is equal to 0, is the 0 or the x-intercept. Now, since c equals 0, let us go back to the given function. This is the value of b. This is the value of a. Uh, we have no C and we also have no D or, or the better term is the values of C and D are both 0. So since C is equal to 0, then the vertical asymptote is X equals 0. And since X equals 0 is the vertical asymptote, that means there is no point of the graph which touches or crosses the Y axis. Therefore, there is no y-intercept. Example 2. Determine the intercept or intercepts 0 and asymptote of f of x equals logarithm of the binomial x plus 3 to the base 5. So let us solve first for the x-intercept or the 0 of the function. Again, this is the given function. So to solve for the x-intercept or 0, 
we will solve or we will substitute 0 to this y and get or solve for the corresponding value of x which will be the x-intercept. So 0 equals logarithm of x plus 3 to the base 5. We substituted 0 to f of x or y. Next, since this is written in simplified form already or the standard form 0 or f of x equals logarithm of x minus c to the base b, then we may now rewrite it in exponential form for us to solve for the value of x. So in this exponential form, this is 5 to the 0 equals x plus 3. So this is that. Next, any number raised to 0, of course, is equal to 1. So we have 1 equals x plus 3. And just like how we solve uh, ordinary linear equation, we will use properties of equality. In this case, we need to use the addi addition property of equality, where we will add negative 3 to both sides or subtract 3 from both sides. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. 3 plus negative 3 or simply 3 minus 3 is 0. What will be left is x. So negative 2 equals x or by reflexive property that is x equals negative 2 this is the value of x when y is 0 meaning negative 2 is the 0 or the x intercept next since the value of c is equal to negative 3 then the vertical asymptote is x equals negative 3 where do we get the value of c Recall that the function is written in the form f of x equals logarithm of x minus c to the base b. So the value of c is not positive 3 but negative 3. We have been telling this over and over again in the past lessons so that everybody will understand it. This comes from x minus negative 3. So that means the value of c is negative 3. Now again, since c is equal to negative 3, then that means the graph of this function will approach and approach that line x equals negative 3. So that will be the vertical asymptote. This is a vertical line which passes through the x-axis at negative 3. Next, let us try to solve for the y-intercept because, uh, because the graph... Um, passes through 0 or the y-axis, then there must be a y-intercept. So let us solve for the y-intercept. Again, this is the given function. This time, we will substitute 0 to x and not to y because we are solving for the y-intercept. So we have f of x equals logarithm of the binomial 0 plus 3 to the base 5. We'll simplify this part first. So, we'll get 3, or f of x equals logarithm of 3 to the base 5. By using your calculator, you will get the value of this part, logarithm of 3 to the base 5. That is um, rounded to the first three decimal places, that is 0 0.683. Or you may round it to two decimal places, 4, 1, whatever you would like. Now, that value of y is the y-intercept. Example 3. Determine the intercept or intercepts 0 and asymptote of f of x equals logarithm of x plus 4. Okay, let us observe first the given function. The value of a is 1. The value of b is 10. We have told that already that if we see no base, then that means that it is a common logarithm. When we say common, the base is 10. So we know here from here that the value of p is 10. The value of c is 0 because this is a monomial only. And then this next term is the value of d, which is 4. Again, this is the given function. Let us solve for the x-intercept or 0 of the function by substituting 0 to this y. So it now becomes 0 equals logarithm of x to the base 4. Since the right-hand side is composed of two terms, then let us first um, combine like terms. Like terms here are the constants 0 and 4. 
So by using addition property of equality, let us add negative 4 to both sides. And we'll get negative 4 equals logarithm of x. 0 plus negative 4 or 0 minus 4 is negative 4. And then uh, when we add here negative 4, or that is when we subtract negative 4 from this part, we'll get 4 minus 4 is 0. What will be left is logarithm of x. So that's how we arrive at this equation. Negative 4 equals logarithm of x. Now that it is simplified, we may now rewrite it in exponential form. That is 10 to the negative 4 equals x. 10 to the negative 4 equals x. So we have this exponential equation. Next, 10 to the negative 4, as we all know, is 1 over 10,000 because the exponent is negative. For it to be positive, we will rewrite it in the denominator part. So 1 over 10,000, that's the value of x. So x is equal to 1 over 10,000, the reflexive property. That value of x is the x-intercept, the 0 or the x-intercept. Next, since c is equal to 0, we have mentioned that earlier, the value of c here is 0, this is the value of b. Since the value of c is 0, then the vertical asymptote is located at x equals 0. This is a line which coincides with the y-axis. That means the graph will just get closer and closer to this line, the y-axis, or to x equals 0, but it will not intersect that. Since the graph will not intersect the y-axis, that means there is no y-intercept. Until next time!